while the history of Europe is well understood and documented, Indochina has remained mysterious. The dense jungles of Laos harbor small towns and sparsely populated regions where literacy and record keeping are just gaining popularity. And so, when the first explorers found thousands of massive stone jars, stretching across hundreds of miles, the questions of who could have done them and why they were made was not easy to answer. Thousands of giant stone jars are scattered throughout the lowlands of Zinkuan, Laos, forming one of the most bizarre archaeological collections in the world, with enigmatic formations ranging from a simple vase to several groups of hundreds. Often referred to as the Southeast Asian version of Stonehenge, the plane of the jars continues to fascinate and interrogate archaeologists and scientists since its discovery in 1930. The plane of jars is one of the greatest archaeological mysteries in the world, he explains. Dr. Dugald O'Reilly from the School of Archaeology and Anthropology, Australia. Surprisingly little research has been done on the site, due to conflicts in the region. The area of the megalithic stonework is still plagued with unexploded ordnance. Between 1953 and 1973, a conflict was fought in Laos involving several factions of the Laotian aristocracy, which fought at the end of the 17th century for the control of power. The conflict was also known as the Secret War, because of the role played by the United States, forced to work in the shadows in Laos after the Geneva Conference of 1954 sanctioned independence and declared neutrality in the nearby Vietnamese conflict. The United States Air Force launched more than 2 million tons of cluster bombs in Laotian territory, many of which remain unexploded, the largest series of bombings since World War II. Although much is known about the recent history of the Plain of Jars, the simple past of the site remains an enigma for archaeologists. Study plans began in 1930. Archaeologists of the time believed that huge megalithic jugs were associated with prehistoric burial practices, which was later consolidated when a group of Japanese archaeologists found human remains and funerary objects inside some jugs of stone. They are not just ordinary vases, some vases are alone, while others appear in groups ranging from a few to several hundred. They are everywhere from the lower hills around the central plain to the valleys of the highlands. More than 60 sites of these containers have been discovered in the plain of the jars, tactically on a high ground. The main site, which is also one of the largest with more than 250 jars, is known as Banang, or Site 1. These jars weigh up to 13 tons each and are from 1 to 3 meters high with a diameter of up to 2.5 meters. Although jars with a lid have not been found in place, most have lip borders, which may indicate that most endured a cover made from perishable materials. Several stone tops have been found with carvings of figures that are believed to be of monkeys, tigers, and frogs. But what was the purpose of the jugs? Orthodox archaeology dates the plane of the jars at the beginning of the Iron Age, approximately 500 BC to 800 AD. Most jars are made of sandstone and others of granite, granite is one of the hardest materials on the planet. It is clear that the people who made these structures had an excellent knowledge of the right material and techniques. According to the research of foreign archaeologists and some parts of the Lao investigation, they came to the same conclusion that a drill class was used. They were not molded because these stones in that period were soft stones and they have been hollowed out for many years. An old burial site Although the results of the series of excavations seem to corroborate the theories of the archaeologists, there is no solid evidence to prove their claims about the actual purpose of the stone vessels in Zinkuan. What is certain for many is that these urns have somehow been used in funeral practices dating back to 2000 years ago. The theory that the entire archaeological zone was once an old cemetery was originally conceived by the French archaeologist Madeleine Coligny. In 1930, he excavated a natural cave located at Site 1. Using an artifact he found, he theorized that the cave, called Number One, had once been a crematorium. The fact that its roof has two artificial openings that resemble chimneys seems to confirm the alleged purpose of the cave. These results led Colony to investigate the origin and purpose of the surrounding jugs as well. What the archaeologist found later gave credence to his theory. 
several stone discs were discovered near the jars to serve as tombstones. He also found some grains, teeth, and fragments of human bones inside the jugs, all of which showed signs of burns. As for the pits that surround most of the stone jugs, Colony presumes that they were used to bury the bodies that were not burned. Local folklore says that the area used to be inhabited by a race of giants, and that its king Kunchung held a celebration after a victorious battle in a long and brutal war. According to this legend, the jugs were used to create and store the Lao Lao, a potent traditional rice wine in Laos, for consumption in a massive celebration of victory. The largest vessels were used by important giants and the largest jar reserved for the king. Another local tradition says that the jars were modeled using natural materials such as clay, sand, sugar, and products of animal origin, in a kind of moldable cement. The locals believe that the cave known as number one of the site was actually a kill in which the jars were produced. The Frogman or the Squat Man Although most of the jugs are undecorated, there is a single jug that is adorned with a carving found inside one, often called Frogman. The engraving is sometimes compared to the cave paintings of Hua Mountain, due to the similarities in style. The painting offers hundreds of human and animal figures, some of which are especially large compared to the other figures. Does this mean the jars on the plane of jars were built during or after the event of the squatting man that many relate to an important astronomical event in antiquity? Were the jars originally used as energy storage devices? It is possible that the jugs had many uses throughout history, perhaps originally made for the storage of something, but later it was used as a burial urn. Perhaps some future archaeological work reveals the who and the why of these stone jars, but do not hold your breath. Decades of war and, more recently, the unloading of unexploded ordnance by the United States pilots who returned to their bases in Vietnam have made the area one of the most dangerous places on earth. Every year, people die or lose their legs, arms and eyes due to these hidden bombs. This is a double-edged sword as it not only prevents archaeologists from exploring the intact jars but also prevents these artifacts from being looted by treasure hunters. Meanwhile, the huge jugs will continue to wait for the giants to celebrate another war one, a war in which surely you would not want to be.